Hi guys, welcome to the next video of the RESTful tutorial series. I had said in my previous video that we would look into the SSL in this video and we will do that but in the later part of this video. I had missed one thing about the basic authentication in the last video and I want to first cover that up and then go to SSL. The thing which I had missed out is how to call a URL secured with basic authentication from the Java client code. We already learnt how to call a web service URL from Java client code but the point is if the URL is secured with user ID and password then how to pass those user ID and password from one from, from our Java client code and the way to do is by using JAXRS filter. The JAXRS filters can modify the outgoing request and incoming response in the client side. And since we are using Jersey 1.17 and this version supports only client side filter but the latest version supports the filters on both the sides, client and the server side. Uh, using filters we can modify the request response headers and the HTTP response bodies also. Now for the basic authentication method what is needed is to pass the encoded user ID and password in the HTTP authorization header. Now Jersey has one filter which exactly does the same thing. The filter name is HTTP basic auth filter. In this filter we just need to pass the user ID and password to access the service. And then this filter adds one authorization header in the HTTP request header and puts the encoded user ID and password to it and that's how user ID and password is passed to the server where it is decoded and validated with. So let's check how we can add filter to the client. Now the client class has one method called add client by which we can add filters to the client. Now first let's run the client code to test the get user info service which is protected with basic authentication uh, method without any filter being added. So now we have this Java client code where we are trying to trigger get user info and we are trying to get its response here using the get method. Let's try to build this and test it. Okay, now this, this servlet code will be accessed by this client.jsp page. Here we are trying to access that servlet. So let's try to run this JSP. Here we can fill up this data. We actually are not using this. Okay. So we got some error here. The error code is 401 and the error message is that this request requires HTTP authentication. So we got the error that this service requires HTTP basic authentication. That means it needs user ID and password for the service to be accessed. Now try to add that filter code here using the add filter method. HTTP basic auth filter. Pass user ID and password to access the service. So in, in the last video we were trying to access the, the same URL from the browser and then the browser pops up the, the window where we can provide the user ID and password and in, here in the Java client code we actually need to do uh, like this where we need to pass the user ID and password in the HTTP basic auth filter and this filter will, will add one authorization header in the request 
and uh, there it will pass the user ID and password encoded um, with some algorithm. Let's try to test this, build this and test it out. Let's see what happens in this case. Okay, so this time it went through and we didn't get any error and we got the response back from the service so this is the way we can access a URL which is secured by basic authentication method using the client filter and passing the user ID and password to it so now we have finished the basic authentication stuff so we, we can start looking into the SSL so what actually is SSL and why it is required let's try to answer these basic questions first and then we'll go into the little more detail of it the SSL stands for secure socket layer they are commonly used for the sites dealing with transactions that could involve sensitive data like passwords or some personal information or some financial information like credit card or debit card information so they are used to secure these kinds of transaction between the browser and web servers now when a site is secured with SSL then we generally need to access those sites using HTTPS protocol instead of HTTP now, even if we try to access an SSL secured site using HTTP it will be redirected to HTTPS protocol now, there are two things which mainly happen with SSL one is to identify the server or site and trust it before making any transaction with it and and second is to encrypt all the data before sending it to the server now for trusting the site the server returns or sends a digital certificate to the client in response to an HTTPS URL access the server or the organization for the domain has to actually acquire the certificate from a third party and that third party checks the domain site and the organization and then provides them the certificate if the organization and its site is legal the certificate also has public and private keys with it which would be used for encrypting the data transmission now when the certificate is sent to the browser or when it comes to the client the browser validates the certificate it checks some important things in the certificate as who has provided the certificate authority and whether that certificate authority is trusted or not and then it checks whether the certificate is expired or not whether it's valid or not and finally it checks the domain name on the certificate so it should match with the with the URL which we are trying to access the domain which we are trying to access from the browser the domain name should match with the domain name present in the certificate so one, once the certificate is validated the browser uses the public key associated with the certificate to encrypt the data before transmitting it the server decrypts it using the private key which it has so this is the way our data is made secure in those SSL transactions now let's see how we can set up this SSL for us for our web application now one problem we have is that we need to acquire a certificate from a third party for our local web application which is actually not registered so it's very difficult to get a certificate like that so there is another concept called self-signed certificate which we can create for ourselves for our testing purpose and for our web local web application and it will be actually signed by ourselves and not not by a third party so when the certificate actually comes to the browser or client it won't be able to get through the certificate validation check 
and hence we'll get a warning from the browser that the certificate is not trusted whether we want to continue or not let's see how to create the self-signed certificate first we'll use the open SSL to do that now there are three commands which we can use to create self-signed certificate and something called key file which contains the public and private key pair first we create the key pair file by using uh, this command so we have installed the OpenSSL and extracted into this folder so we have OpenSSL binary in this folder we can use that OpenSSL to create the self-signed certificate for us first we need to create the the key file the, and the command for that is open SSL generate RSA with 1024 bits let's check whether it got created or not okay we got the server.key so it, this is containing the public and private key next we need to generate the certificate signing request CSR it is known as and this CSR will contain the information about who the certificate will be created for and it needs server.key as, as an input which we just created now the command to generate the CSR is like this you will be presented with a series of questions the most important question is the value of the common name and this value must match exactly with the host name and domain name that you would use to access the URL so country name and all we need to give here country name state name city organization name We'll just give local host now. Local host. Common name is local host. So this should match with the domain in which we are trying to access in the URL. Then the email address. and some password we did not provide that and option company name okay, okay so we got the CSR also. now the command to get the certificate is Now X509 here is a type of the certificate one of the types of the certificate even the third party CAs generally create this type of certificate so this standard type of certificate so here you can see we, we got the certificate here this certificate will be utilized for the SSL uh, validation so we, we got the uh, self-signed self certificate here we'll see how to set up the SSL in server using this certificate in next video thanks for watching